Hello, everyone, and inside today's Locked On Canadians, it is the start of player review season. We're taking a look at goalies, we're taking a look at the Laval Rocket, and more all inside today's show. Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 829 of Locked on Canadians. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. As always, we are Locked on Canadians. We are your team every single day, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, wherever you get your daily podcasts or on YouTube if you are into a visual medium. I am one of your hosts. I am Scott Matt, and I'm joined, as always, by my fantastic co host the active stick, Laura Saba. And Laura, it is player review season, not in this immediate segment, but in the next couple segments. So uh, that means, for all those who aren't going to read between the lines, there is no more Montreal Canadiens hockey at any level this season. How are we feeling uh, about that, Laura? Honestly, it's not ideal when you're watching, you know, fans of other teams cheer on their teams in the playoffs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, But for us, I think it gives us a chance to kind of single out certain players because I think it, the season as a whole was not great. Uh, and we know that, but some players still manage to take strides forward. Some players uh, manage to really cement their, their, their um, uh, presence here in Montreal. Uh, I think that would be good. I also think that, you know, if there's any players that stand out on the rocket, like people should kind of let us know who they want to hear about, like how their season went, because it's not just Montreal Canadiens anymore. It's the whole organization, particularly people who may make the Montreal Canadiens or who could be trade chips. Um, and just before we launch into the rocket, because I know that's what we were going to talk about, I want to tell everyone there's a surprise guest that is very focused on prospects coming up later this week. Um, and we would like you your questions about prospects. Uh, so please email them to us at lockedoncanadians at gmail.com. If you leave them at the YouTube level, can you please put prospect mailbag question uh, or you can tweet them uh, to us at LO underscore Canadians because we will be recording at the same time as our usual mailbag. If we get enough questions, it might be an all prospect mailbag uh, segment. Uh, sorry, uh, episode, or if we get few, we'll do, we'll break down a couple of prospects and then we'll get into, um, we'll get into your mailback questions. It can be about halves prospects or prospects that could be drafted uh, this off season. And I am very excited about that because the U 18s are happening right now. I'm actually able to watch that at work because it's on NHL network, which we put on in the shop at work, which is Great. Gotten to see a lot from players that we talked about with Tony Ferrari last week and some that we will definitely be talking about this week. We're going to jump into my realm here first, though. The Laval Rocket played their last game of the season on Friday night. Uh, Earlier in the week, they were shut out 4-0 against the Utica Comets in a game that the offense... I put this in my recaps multiple times. They were smothered. And this was a team they'd only lost to once during the regular season. They had a very good record against the Utica Comets. And in the playoffs, the team just did not have an answer for the smothering style they were playing. And they dropped a 2-1 game in overtime. They were in a best-of-three play-in series and uh, dropped that on Friday night. They were winning one nothing, And the game-time goal went in with two seconds left with the net empty. And then they lost in overtime the biggest thing in this, since this is a goalie-centric episode, Caden Primo was great. He was great down the stretch. He was great in those two games. No one else on the team really was there in the way that they needed them to. Yeah, they had injuries. Nicola Baudin wasn't playing. Uh, Mitchell Stevens was out. They had Brandon Jignac, who was definitely not 100% as their first-line center. And that meant yesterday was locker clean-out day for the Rocket. They had about a dozen or so players. And there's interesting news in that. And there are some people that are definitely not coming back that you can tell based on their exit interviews and some that I would not be shocked if they were extended uh, in the next little bit here. But after last year's uh, run to the Eastern conference finals and everything, I wouldn't be, 
I would be lying if I didn't say this was a little disappointing because the Rocket aren't a bad team, but they're a team that has flaws and they couldn't overcome them in this series. So that is that is actually the last of current professional Montreal Canadiens teams playing at this point. Which obviously is sad. Like I said, it's not ideal. That's not what you want. But to be honest, I think the Canadians also, um, this helps the front office a lot in realizing truly what they have and what they don't have. Because it's easier to address flaws as a group. Like if you're weak at a certain position up and down your organization, you really need to work on that. If you don't have enough coming up the pipeline, like the idea is you don't want to be a team that no longer has prospects uh, or draft picks when you are at the point of contending. I don't believe in that. I know a lot of people do that, right? Like they pull out all the stops. They're like, all right, that's it. We're in win now mode. So we're just going to trade away prospects or whatever. I think you need to have people coming up in the pipeline. So even if you do take a down turn when you're good in your contending years you can come back up as soon as possible so like for me I think I think it's like it's it's eye-opening for the organization and it gives them a little bit of a blueprint of what they need to fix and the thing is there are some of the veterans on this team are definitely coming back uh Gabriel Bork seems like he's coming back very likely to probably be the captain on this team next year Brandon Jiniak will be back he's on a two-year deal but he has a clause in his contract that it allows it to be Uh, turned into an NHL contract next season. And I think that was a big reason why he's still here. Uh, But names like Donick Martell and Corey Schooneman seem like they're heading out. Martell indicated he wouldn't be back. And Schooneman wants a regular NHL chance, which with the Canadians' youth and depth, he's not going to get. But guys like Nicolas Baudin mentioned they want to be back. Peter Abandonado. You have Anthony Richard, who says he wants to be back. He wants to finish what he started here. And I think that's huge news for the Rocket because Richard broke in as a regular, regular as an NHL player this year, and he wants to prove he can stick there. And if the Canadians are going to continue to change what their lineup looks like, there's going to be opportunities for him again. I think it's going to be a very interesting offseason because Hughes and Gorton are going to want to bring in more of their own people. Jean-Francois Houle is entering the final year of his uh, coaching contract with the Rocket that was uh, signed by Mark Bergevin. Ironically, the goalies are set. Caden Primo does need waivers next year, but he seems confident that he can take an NHL spot there and keep that. And that's interesting because, as I said, today's player reviews are on the NHL goalies. We're going to start with Jake Allen. We're going to get to Samuel Montembo. We're going to see how all these players can impact Caden Primo's potential future. And that's all coming up in our next segment. But first, as we said earlier, today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Have you ever, ever been stressed out trying to buy last minute tickets for that big game in town? That show you've been dying to see with friends. You don't got to worry about that anymore because Game Time has you covered. You can find anything you're looking for. If I wanted to find tickets to a last-minute concert or show here in Buffalo, I could use Game Type for that. They've got flash deals and last-minute tickets, easy to find and buy tickets for any kind of event in your area. You can see what your seats will look like right in the app and is the lowest price guaranteed. And if it has event cancellation protection, job loss protection, everything so that you have nothing to worry about with these. So forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event, and you can get even more exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy theater, and more everything. And the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find the tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you for 110% of the difference. So download the Game Time app, create an account, use code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off your purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code locked on NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We are back here at Locked On Canadians. It is play review season. And we're going to start with the one where we know it's voodoo and it doesn't make any sense, but we're starting there because there are only two of them that we need to review in this episode. And this is a three segment show because, as always, we are the masters of consistency. And we're going to start with Jake Allen, someone who's had two very good years for the Montreal Canadiens as a, I don't want to say backup, but as a backup goaltender. And one this year that was maybe not as great, though through no fault of his own. I'm 
I'm really curious what people's opinions on Jake Allen are because I thought he's someone, and this applies to Samuel Montembeau as well, who played as well as he could until he couldn't anymore, and then everything, like, cracks in a dam. Everything happened. His team's penalty kill was not good. The defensive structure lacked at times. And there were some games that, okay, Jake Allen is the only one playing well. It is still for nothing, and he's the only one playing there. I don't want to say he had a great season, but I don't think an 891 tells the entire story for Jake Allen in terms of his save percentage here. That's exactly what I was about to say, is that if you look at his NHL career stats, um, and then you look at this year's stats, obviously it's a quite a big dip. Uh, also, if you just if you look at year over year, it's quite a big dip. And if you look objectively, 891 is not a good save percentage for a goaltender in a season. But then you have to look at the who, who he had in front of him. I mean, I, I think obviously the number of shots you face versus the number of shots you save, uh, that's what determines your, your goals against average. But it's not as simple as that. It's what kind of shots are you seeing? Are your defensemen really doing as much work as possible to give you the most sight lines, to give you the most flexibility, to give you the most reaction time? So it is partly just the reaction time itself. Uh, sorry, the um, the defense itself. It's never just a single goaltender. We got too used to Carey Price, who was able to be everywhere, who was so much more athletic than so many more goaltenders. And he did a lot of the work on his own. And then when you remove a goaltender like that, any goaltender, even if they're good, if they're not the top of the top of the top, they're going to suffer. Like their safe percentage is going to suffer. Their, their goals against average is going to suffer. And I think for me, obviously he's also getting a little bit older. So like his career is not in his prime anymore. Um, and also he was overworked and tired, right? Like he had so many injuries last year coming back from that and trying to be consistent this year, I think is a little rough. Like it's it, the expectations weren't this low, but they also weren't much higher than this to begin with. When you saw what they had in front of him, when you saw like there were no run support, there was so much of the action taking place in his end and not offensively and like giving him, you know, the opportunity to be ready. Uh, it was just, I think for me, I, I think that his I don't blame him for the lower performance that he had this year. How about that? And I look at this in like last year, Jake Allen won nine games and put up a 905 save percentage. And he was facing 40, 45 shots. There's some games that wasn't the case this year. And it's you and I both had our suspicions that he played some of these games injured this year because they didn't really have Caden Primo from the AHL. And it wasn't bad enough to bench him, but not good, not well enough to play kind of situation. It's it's such a bizarre thing because I still think that there's value out there for a player like Jake Allen and that there are teams that are looking for a Jake Allen. A guy, can you give us 35 games behind our actual number one goalie? That's what he was brought in to do. And in that role, you know, 29 games in the year they went to the cup final, 11, 2, and 5. 907 save percentage. You can't ask much more from a, your 1B goaltender in that situation. And this year, I know across the NHL, like league average goaltending was a 901 this year. It was, I believe it was a 901. I saw that floating around Twitter. So that's down. And I look at this and go, a team that at one point was playing five rookies on defense had a patchwork offense full of AHL call ups. His numbers aren't going to look glamorous. The biggest thing is, I guess, what do you do now with Jake Allen in this offseason? Because if Caden Primo needs to come in or they want to get him in because they don't think he'll get through waivers, you have to figure out you can't run three goals at the NHL level. Someone's sitting for too long. You can't pay money for someone to sit for that long, especially a prospect. Is this the offseason that he finally gets moved? And it's a shame it's going to be coming off of a season like this right now, which is unfortunate, but that's sometimes just how the cookie crumbles a little bit. I think the fans still will appreciate what he brought to the table. We're just, we're only two years removed from that magical cup run. And I think, you know, I, th I think we understand that it wasn't really all him because you have to be one of those world beating all world hall of fame, whatever you want to call them. You have to be one of those goaltenders in order to perform better behind a defense that doesn't even have an identity. And most nights it was like, we didn't even know who was going to play because of all the injuries. So 
I totally think that fans will will give him the appreciation that he's due. Yeah, and I think that's that's kind of an interesting part here is that I think fans do really think the world of Jake Allen, who came in in a in a tough spot. You have to pick up the reins from Carey Price. Uh, I'm gonna put a season around a C. I was hoping that you know maybe be a little bit better, but with the team that was in front of him, I don't think it's reasonable to expect too much more from that there. And I forgot to mention this off the top. When we do player reviews uh, on the locked on Canadian Twitter account at LO underscore Canadians, you should follow us there. We're going to post a player's name and then a B C D on there. We want you, our listeners to vote in that poll so we can see what our opinion was versus what our listeners opinions are on players. We will start posting those later into this week as we do more and more player reviews. Yes, I Laura? think we can also post them on YouTube as well. I just can't figure out how yet, but we'll post every single player and we'll give you the option to weigh in for the same amount of time that we do on Twitter. So you can check the YouTube or the Twitter and they'll be there. And given that we are still doing player reviews, we are on to the little rosy cheeked cherub himself. We're going to get into Samuel Montembeau's season and his world championships appearance coming up next we are back here at locked on canadians we are wrapping up this monday episode we know there's no three up and three down because well there was no hockey to up or down in this season here so we're wrapping up our first round of player reviews and we're going to start with the goaltenders and finish with perhaps the biggest surprise on the montreal canadians this year and that is samuel montembeau of the montreal canadians finishes the year 40 games played 3.42 3.42 goals against 901 save percentage 16 19 and 3 dare i say next year's starting goaltender samuel montembo i mean that's the way it's trending right now isn't it even if they if they move jake allen in the offseason they bring caden primo up samuel montembo is probably what they have in terms of a starter uh i think that he's done a lot to earn the position i was looking at you know, you look at all the games and the number of goals he's allowed and all of that. And then you look at his save percentage and it's a 901, which is incredible. He has league average save percentage when his team was not good. Like it was just it's, it's it was appalling. So I, I don't know. I'm, I was so impressed with this guy. And, and he's not he's not old. He's 26 years old. Like this is around the time where he's going to enter his prime. He's also earned a call up to the world championships, which is so deserved. Uh, I'm just so excited about him. I don't I don't think that he is. He's shown at this point, like he's 26 years old, right? Like we, I don't think he's shown that he's a number one goaltender in general. But I think for the Montreal Canadiens, he's still got the chance to be their number one goaltender the next couple of years. Like, I don't think he's going to be there when the Canadians are like, you know, competing for cups, but I think that the next couple of years, like the Canadians can feel pretty solid with him there. And it's funny is that his overall save percentage here would probably look a lot better, but like down the stretch last game of the season was his worst total save percentage on the year where he allowed five goals against the Bruins, seven sixty two save percentage. Uh, the night before against the Islanders, 886. But like I look at some of these games, you know, 974 against the Rangers, 968 against Columbus, 962 against Winnipeg, 956 against Buffalo, where he stopped 43 shots. There was that game against Carolina where he made 47 saves. Like he had a really strong season, even in games where they gave up a lot of goals. It's not because of him. It's because the team's quitting on me. There was a game against Toronto down the stretch, 46 shots against 39 saves. That's not on the goalie. That's the defense is collapsing around you here. And he's such a fascinating player here because last year was okay. Maybe there's something there. Maybe something's not, but claimed off of waivers, big redemption season here. Like you said, he got called up to play for team Canada with Devin Levi at the world championships usually a pretty good sign for things. And I know he's not magically going to turn into an all world goalie here, but if he can be a nine, 10 goalie, you know, punching a little bit above what his save percentage was this year, the Canadians probably found someone off the scrap heap again. And I will say scrap heap because he was chucked on waivers and the Canadians acquired him and he's turned out pretty well. All things considered six foot three, 214 pounds, 
And he just looked so much more composed a lot more often this year. Some leaky goals here or there, but it's hard to not like what we saw from Samuel Montembeau this year. And I do feel a little bit more comfortable going into another season of rebuilding with a guy like this as your 1A goaltender. If Caden Bremo can be 1B, we'll see. But at right now, this kind of solves that little gap issue before Dobish and Disho and Primo and everyone makes that full-time jump. Samuel Montembeau is that perfect br- get bridge gapper there. And I got to say, if it wasn't for Nick Suzuki, probably your team MVP this year, honestly. And I don't think that's too much of a stretch to say that. It was about a third of the way into the season this year. And Samuel Montembeau was still in the top five goaltenders when you looked at the NHL stats page. So I think... It's not it's it's not something to sneeze at, right? He he did everything that he possibly could. There was no one, there was nothing anyone like sorry, there was nothing he could have done possibly. It it was up to everyone else. And it's very telling too that you look at the games and you look at you look at like you said, he made 47 saves. Like these are incredible teams that he's playing against, particularly down the stretch. We talked so much about how hard the Canadians uh uh like last leg of the season was going to be, but pretty well pretty far into the season. It was about a third of the way, a little bit longer than that. He was still consistent, I think it was safe percentage in terms of safe percentage or goals against average. He was still consistently in the top 5 goaltenders in the league, in the entire NHL. So, I think that's something that you have to kind of keep in mind. And like I said, like I think he's not going to be the forever goaltender, but I think for a couple of years the Canadians don't need to really worry. No, and I I'm just kind of looking at some of the, I'm on hockey reference behind it here. Like I'm looking at the goals saved above average where he was one of the most surprising people this season on those lists that money puck put out. It was constantly Samuel Montembeau. And then down the stretch when the team just ran out of gas and that is the easiest way to put it is he couldn't paper over that for as long. He's a good goaltender. He is not Carey Price, but I'm, I'm very happy that things seem to have worked out here, that he earned a two-year deal out of this. And honestly, if they don't want to trade Jake Allen, they probably have a lot of value in this. But I also, at the same time, don't think it's wise to trade a 26-year-old goalie who seems to be finding his stride in your organization. And it all depends on what the value is, because we know other GMs like the more veteran goaltenders. And Samuel Montembeau has really only two big years of NHL experience. Everything else was mostly spent in the AHL. And he's been only an NHL regular with the Canadians at this point. I want to give his season a solid B here. I don't think that's reaching too far there. Down the stretch, it was tough, but they also had, had to lose games in order to claim their draft position there. And I think one, probably tired faced a lot of pucks this season. He faced 1,300 shots. I'm not sure uh, where that ranks among the NHL, but like it's uh, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of pucks fired at net, and that's a very busy guy. We look at some of those games, even last year when he had wins, that the final horn sounds and he gets a wins, and he's just draped over the back of his net because he's so tired. Uh, I got to say, probably one of the big feel-good stories out of this year, and I think giving him a B is probably a safe safe bet to make, I think. You wouldn't give him a B plus? I, if he had held it together just a little bit more down the stretch there and kept it at that, like, 905, 907, he was, uh, that he was uh, going against there, yes. But this was... I don't know. Maybe I'm being too mean because I don't just want to give out high grades willy nilly on things, but I can see the argument for it, all things considered. Yeah, I feel like, there, well, there's some guys that obviously understandably faced a bit more, like John Gibson from Anaheim because he, he <laughs> played most of the games. You see Saros, who played most of the games. Uh, Samuel Montambo and Jake Allen split pretty evenly, like 40 and 42 they played. So, like, you know, the, 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 the people that, faced a lot more shots i'm sorry it's early in the morning that's why i'm stumbling over my words do not complain um 
you know, the guys that, that, that faced more than them simply just played more games or they were uh, they played for a lot worse teams uh, or they were the kind of goaltender, like, for example, Connor Hellebuck, that had to carry the team. Yeah, like right? he was he was the bright piece that the Canadians team needed right now. And I think that next year is going to be a big one because if he plays well again. Are you as the Canadians look at this and going, OK, maybe we extend this again and we run 1A, 1B with whichever goalie is behind Whoever. them. So it's going to be an interesting opportunity there. Uh, Laura, did you have any parting thoughts? No, I, I think we, we, we got it covered for the goalies. Just uh, remember to send us prospect uh, questions that you have before Thursday afternoon-ish. Uh, and you can send them to Locked On Canadians at Gmail, or you can tweet them, LO underscore Canadians. And if you put them in the YouTube, make put prospect mailback question at the beginning of your comment, please. And I think, too, we're, we'll try and break up one forward, one defenseman on each show so we're not just doing all forwards. But... We will let you know which players we are talking about on our next episode. You will see those posted on our socials. And remember to follow Laura at The Active Stick. Follow myself at Scott Matla. And as always, follow us at LO underscore Canadians. Subscribe wherever you get your daily podcast. Subscribe on YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. We will see you all next time.